folks, welcome back to Nostalgenomics. I know, Brilliant Stars is sold out. It's going to the moon. Lost Origins going to the moon. Astral Radiance is right behind them. What sets next? Probably Silver Tempest. Modern continues to be on fire. All the alt arts in those sets are continuing on their train to the moon as well. And it's good times to be a Pokemon investor or collector in this hobby. But we got to always talk about what's next, right? I'm sure the interest is going to stay around the Sword and Shield era on the booster boxes and the alt arts for the foreseeable future. But moving into later this year, into 2025, I've talked about it before, but I wanted to do a detailed video and really line out all the cards I'm talking about because some people, they're kind of new to the hobby. They weren't around during XY. They don't even know what I'm saying when I say the megas, right? Where a lot of people are like, oh yeah, obviously the full art mega evolutions from XY. And so I wanted to really run through all of those and show the best ones in each set and uh, talk about what kind of plays there are. If you want to go raw, if you want to go PSA 10, if you want to go PSA 9, what, huh? PSA 9s? Guys, I'm also going to link a video that I made a while back. If you don't understand investing in PSA 9s, this will give you a, a full breakdown of it in this video I'm going to link. But um, PSA 9s can actually outperform PSA 10s in terms of percentage gain. What I mean is if you have a $1,000 PSA 10 and the PSA 9 is at $100, you're a lot more likely to do better buying 10 PSA 9s and having those go to $200 than buying one PSA 10 and having that go to $2,000. One, it's more likely. Two is because it's more liquid and more people can afford it, meaning more money will pile into that instead of the higher value card. We even seen this during the 2020, 2021 boom with vintage and mid era. I actually link a lot of cards in that video I'm going to share. Um, a lot of PSA 9s actually outperform their same PSA 10 card, um, both in terms of percentage gain during the, the biggest spikes and in percentage gain after everything settled down. And so uh, some cards are, you know, better price point and better uh, play at PSA 10. Some are a better play at PSA 9. Some, if you just want to go raw, you can go that route. But there are tons of plays out there to be had. And so let's go ahead and talk about it. Oh, but first, this is not sponsored. So, uh, but uh, a friend of the channel did send me a bunch of stuff. You guys probably seen him in the chat, seen him in the Discord. In the chat, he's always goes by Pokemon Department Store in the uh, uh, Discord. His name's Johnny Boy. But uh, he sent me some really cool stuff. So, like, guys, look, like, these, these Pokemon coasters, look at that. I mean, they look incredible, right? He, uh, he does pretty much everything. He sent me a couple of these binders, right, small binder, and you can get, like, the big binder, um, and he's working on a skateboard right now. Basically, he can print anything you want uh, or any item you want with anything you want on it. And, uh, yeah, it's really high quality stuff. So I don't know if you got like someone you want to give gifts to, or you got like a party coming up, you want to get something for yourself. I'll also leave his Instagram link. If you want to reach out to him because, uh, you know, very reasonably priced does really good work and uh, you'd be helping someone else out as a member of the community. So I'm sure he'd appreciate that. So Pokemon department store, man, thanks for sending me this stuff. And uh, I hope your business continues to grow, man. Um, all right, so what are we talking about today? All right, so first off, I'm going to talk about the announcement of where all this came from. So this is where Pokemon announced Pokemon Legends ZNA launches in 2025 with return of Mega Evolutions. That's kind of what got everyone talking right there, okay? So that, that's what they kind of said, hey, we're, we're making a game next year. It's going to bring back Mega Evolutions. Most likely, they're going to, they're going to put those Mega Evolutions in the trading card sets, and that's what will probably cause a lot of interest to go back to the original Mega Evolutions is what I'm speculating. So let's go ahead and look at what we're actually talking about. These guys, these cards, right? With the cool Japanese, you know, riding across them, real cool artworks back in XY. Again, XY, it's like eight to 10 years old now. But I mean, look at that. The art still holds up to this day, if you ask me. I know, I know. It's another video of Alex pumping XY. If you don't like it, you can skip to the next one. I don't do this very often. Leave me alone. Um, I love XY. <laughs> but uh so when it comes to this kind of first one i would talk about on um, primal clash so the early sets right it's not to say there's not way more collectible cards in all these sets i just wanted to focus on the mega evolutions today so sure in base set or flash fire and phantom forces there's a lot of cool full arts they even have some megas but they're like kind of the half art they're not the regular exes they're not the full art exes so yeah there's a lot of great cards great plays it's just I really want to focus on the full art mega evolutions and the first ones I think are worth talking about come start in a primal clash. So you have the primal Groudon, which I, I know it's not technically a mega, but it's basically the same artwork. Say it's marketed the same way as a mega, but it's technically a primal. But um, I think this primal Groudon full art 
and the primal Kyogre in that set. Same type of thing. It's a primal, but it's not it's not a mega. And then it also has a mega Gardevoir. So this is the first mega Gardevoir in the XY era. There are many more after this, but this is the first one. So it could be a play as well. So this is the, this is the three cards from Primal Clash. If you want any of those. Next up, you got the first mega Rayquaza full art. This comes to you in Roaring Skies. Now, we're going to talk about it. There is another mega Rayquaza, which actually performs better. And uh, it's really what, which preference you have. But this is the first Mega Rayquaza that comes in Roaring Skies. Okay. Then we go to Ancient Origins. Here's the other one. So if you want, you know, kind of the more gold, flashier version in the Ancient Origins, or you can go get the original one in, in uh, Roaring Skies. Now, this one is obviously more valuable, but you never know how people are in the future. Sometimes people want to go get the first, right? This isn't the first. Maybe the better looking one, the more expensive one from the more popular set, but it's not the first. And the same goes for the Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre. They both got their nice, fancy, schmancy gold versions uh, printed in Ancient Origins as well. But as I showed before, they do have their original copies back in Primal Clash, so whichever way you want to play those, okay? Um, now, the Mega Tyranitar is also in Ancient Origins. This, in my opinion, is a very undervalued card. It's actually pretty far down in the set overall. And just as, as popular as a Pokemon Tyranitar is, I just don't know if this Mega Evolution has got enough love. So this could be a very real play uh, going into next year. All right. You also have the Sceptile. I just threw the Sceptile in because, you know, it is a one of the uh, evolved form of the starters. And, you know, it, it could out outperform as well. But it's actually a very affordable uh, Mega Evolution as well. All right. Now we get to one of my favorite sets in XY Breakthrough. Guys, these two Mewtwo cards, in my opinion, top notch. You got the Mega Mewtwo, uh, the blue one. And you have the Mega Mewtwo, the red one. I guess it's X and Y. Um, I think both these cards are going to perform very well. Both of them have seen pullbacks in the past year after kind of the big uh the big run up last year x y and sun and moon had so they are actually down a bit from their highs and they could be good pickups whether it be raw um psa 9 or psa 10 copies again we're going to talk more about the psa uh, 10 9 which way you want to play which card at the end of this um i just want to get through the cards first so it also has the mega houndoom hey houndoom's got a little bit of a following people do like houndoom um, it is in, in the breakthrough set as well. So that could also be a pickup. It is pretty inexpensive mega uh, full art. Um, now, breakpoint, guys, there's not too much going on in breakpoint. There's cool cards, right? There's a full art Espeon. There's other good art, good cards. But as far as full art megas, it really revolves around the Gyarados. So this is, if you want a mega from uh, breakpoint, want a mega Gyarados, this is going to be your card. It does have a mega scissor. I don't really know how much following or how much pull scissor has. So it could be a pickup if you just want to get them all and you want to like, you know, really throw some dice. But uh, I'm not sure how, how much the Mega Scizor will do. I would, I would definitely rather really go with the Mega Gyarados in that set. Moving on to Generations, guys. Er, again, Generations got a ton of great cards to collect. It does have a Mega Charizard EX, but it isn't a full art. It does have a lot of other cool full arts like the Flareon, like, you know, but this is one of the only Mega Full Art Full Art or Mega Full Arts, I would say, to go after is this Mega Gardevoir EX. It's from the Radiant Collection. Um, it's got the two Gardevoirs in it. it, it it's a good looking card. Um, but other, otherwise, from Generations, if you're really just going after this Mega Full Art play, I don't think there's much else in Generations to go after. Uh, brings us to Fates Collide. Guys, this is probably my favorite Full uh, full Art Mega. I know a lot of people think there's too much going on. A lot of people don't like this card. I'm a huge fan of it. I pulled it myself back in the day out of the collection box. Love this card. I still love it to this day. The picture doesn't do it justice when you see it in person. It's really got a lot going on in the card with the texturing and everything. So I really like this uh, Mega Full Art Alakazam from Fates Collide. Again, there's the Fates Collide um, uh, Secret Rare, right? With the gold border with the Lugia and the Umbreon in it. Great card. Another great pickup. Again, we're just sticking to the Mega uh, Full Art plays because of the Megas coming back. But great card in Fates Collide. Um, Steam Siege, right? It's got another Gardevoir in it. Now, this is going to be probably one of the lesser popular Gardevoirs out of all the ones I've shown so far. So, I mean, it's still a Gardevoir. It could just kind of piggyback off the rest, but not too sure. Steam Siege also has a Mega Steelix full art, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, Steelix has, has some popularity. It's doing pretty well in, uh, what is that, Paradox Rift right now, the illustration. And so, uh, you know, Mega Steelix has something going on for it. So, Mega Steelix, especially how cheap it is, you know, near minute selling in under $10.00. This could definitely be a pickup. And then we move to the big bad evolutions. Guys, look, got, it's got the Charizard. It's got the Blastoise. It's got the Venusaur. It's even got a full art Mega Pidgeot. Now, I get it. Evolutions are printed to the ground. There's tons of these cards out there. There's tons of them graded. They weren't that hard to grade. However, we're not, I, a lot of these, I'm not talking about holding forever, right? 
but there could be a very real opportunity in the short run, in the short term, of these seeing massive growth potential within the next year, year and a half, two years, because of the return of Megas, the Pokemon's, you know, Zeta uh, A game and all of that going on. So these could be good short-term plays, even though there are a lot of them out there. So I wouldn't rule all of those out. So that's kind of all the full art Megas guys that I would keep track of and I would start looking for if you want to make that play. Now let's talk about how to play it. Obviously, if you want to go the, the non-graded route, the raw route, you can definitely do that. It's always an option. If you want to go the graded route, okay, take something like this Mewtwo, right? It is getting more scarce, right? But you can still find a PSA 10 in the low or mid 200s. So that's not really out of most people's price range. Um, that's still very liquid at that. It, it's still affordable. So like something like that, I would probably try to play more of the PSA 10 copy on this. When you go to something like the Primal Groudon, right? Zero. There are zero of these on the market in a PSA 10. Not only that, there's one copy in a PSA 9. Okay, so this is one of those things where it's like, you take what you can get if you want to make a play. I don't know. Maybe we go all the way back to PSA 8s and there's four results for PSA 8. So maybe you buy one of the PSA 8s or maybe you just get it raw. So sometimes you just can't even, even find you know the plays. Now, there are obviously there's some in the middle. So this is kind of one in the middle. The Rayquaza EX, right, from Ancient Origins, right? You can still find it around $800 to $850, okay, in a PSA 10. While the PSA 9, you can find all the way down on like the $200 range, $200 to $300. So that's kind of where the uh, the PSA 9 is. So you could ask yourself, well, if this goes up 50%, do I see this card getting to $450 before I see this card getting to $1,200? Sometimes the answer might be yes, and it could still make sense to pick up the nine, even though the 10 is still available. And so you just have to do that math for yourself and kind of what, what I like to say, guys, is if the disparity is very great between the nine and the 10, the nine can make a lot more sense for an investment. If the disparity is very close, it might not. So think of like the Umbreon, uh, the Moonbreon from Valve Skies. Raw, it, it's very, it's not too much less than the PSA 10, right? So it's like, why not just spend an extra few hundred dollars and get the PSA 10 because the disparity is not great. There's other cards where like a PSA 9 is 100 200 dollars and the PSA 10 is like 900 to 1000 dollars where there's a huge margin there and you can you have to think to yourself, well I think a 100 200 dollar card is going to continue to be more liquid and actually rise faster percentage wise than a, a 900 to 1000 dollar card and so it can make more sense to move in the PSA 9. It's not always the case though again, it's not a rule. Um, I will go ahead and link this video though. This is my video I made. It's called The Truth About Pokemon Investing that Lied to You. And it was it's all based around showing um, how PSA 9s actually outperformed a lot of PSA 10s um, in both modern, mid-era, and, and vintage during the boom, after the boom. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about there so you can make the best informed decision for yourself. But uh, that's pretty much all I got today, guys. Um, I hope it at least uh, opened your eyes up to what's out there. Maybe um, people will make some plays on these and do well in the next year or two years. Or, hey, maybe we're all idiots and maybe, you know, the Pokemon Z, Z to A will come out and they'll re-release Megas and Scarlet and Violet and people will chase them and no one will ever come back to these XY ones. And I'll just cry my eyes out because everyone hates XY and I love it. So that could always be a thing too. But uh, I don't know. I really think there's an opportunity here. So good luck to everyone. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'll be back here in a new video soon. I'm out.